Hey there, church. It is so wonderful to see all of you. Welcome to our streaming worship. If you're visiting with us today, welcome. We are so glad that you're here. I'm Pastor Chris, and I am grateful to be gathered together in worship with you today. A bit of a note about how our worship is working during this time. We have resumed in-person worship in our sanctuary here at New Hope. And if you're in the area on Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m., we would love to see you. We absolutely invite you to join us for worship and to praise God together. If you can't get here on Sunday mornings, that 10.30 a.m. worship service will be live streamed. And then about an hour or so after that service is done, this service will be available for you to worship on demand anytime from wherever you are. All of our worship services and resources can be found on our website at newhopelc.org. And these services can also be streamed on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash newhopelc. Today, friends, if you're curious about New Hope and who we are, I want to invite you to check out our website, again, at newhopelc.org. And if you have any questions about what we're about, or if you have any prayer requests today, or, or if you just want to say hi, would you drop me a note? You can email me at pastor at newhopelc.org, or you can email our admin at info at newhopelc.org. You can also drop a comment on YouTube or even our Facebook page, which is at facebook.com slash newhopelc. However you choose to interact today, we want to hear from you. We hope and we pray that you are well today. And I want you to know that we give thanks to God for you and that we are holding you in our prayers. These aren't easy times to be sure, but I want you to know that wherever you are on your journey today, you are welcome here. There is a place for you here. God walks with you here. Lastly, church, we want to invite you to share this worship service with your friends and family. Share it to your social media feeds. Send it out over email. Invite folks to worship with you today. The best place to get all of the latest and most up-to-date information on everything happening here at New Hope is through our Thursday afternoon e-blast newsletter. Our email newsletter has updates about worship, faith formation, ways for you to be involved in serving our community. Church, that is the best place to get all of the information all together in one place. If you're not already subscribed to and receiving our eblast and you would like to be, please send an email to info at newhopelc.org with the word eblast in the subject line and we will get you added to our distribution list. A reminder that the links, the links to our weekly eblast newsletter are also posted to our Facebook page again at facebook.com slash newhopelc. If you're looking for a faith community, today, faith community today, I am so thrilled that God has brought you here to New Hope. We believe that the good news of God in Christ Jesus is for all people regardless of their personal status, race, creed, sexuality, gender identity, or any other label or condition that we use to divide or separate people. We are a champion of doing God's work with our hands, particularly serving the underprivileged and the vulnerable in our community and beyond. We believe that each and every person is endowed with gifts from God, gifts that are to be used for the betterment of this world and the good of all humankind. And it is our sincere prayer that everyone we encounter will experience this life-changing love of God through us. Again, friends, if we can hold you in prayer today, would you let us know? Drop a comment on YouTube or Facebook or send me an email again to pastor at newhopelc.org. We love you. And we are so grateful to God for you. 
Church, if you would like to make a gift to our ministry or give your offering today, we want to encourage you and to thank you for your generosity. There are many ways that you can do this. You can mail in your gift. You can drop it by our church office if you're in the area. You can also very easily give online using any credit or debit card. The link for that is on the screen down below. It is also posted down in the video description. But church, however you choose to give, whether your time, your energy, or your resources, we just want to express our gratitude to you for your incredible generosity. And lastly, church, we want to encourage you to bring yourselves fully and to participate fully in worship today. Grab your Bible or open the Bible app on your phone and read through the lessons with us and follow along. We invite you to sing along with the hymns that will be up on your screen. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. We invite you, friends, to truly worship. Light a candle. Sit on the floor. Whatever helps you to set this time and this space apart. Be present here. This is holy space. Take a deep breath. Receive the Holy Spirit. God is here. Welcome to worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, you to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may more perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us, even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. It is by grace that you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sin is forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we implore you to hear the prayers of your people. Be our strong defense against all harm and danger that we may live and grow in faith and hope. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from 2 Corinthians. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to, to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need in order that there may be fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders in the synagogue named Jairus came and when he saw Jesus fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So Jesus went with him and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under physicians and, and had spent all that she had and she was no better, but rather, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she fell in her, felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, Who touched me? Jesus looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping, and they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. Jesus took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were very overcome with amazement. Jesus strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. Well, hello, here we are on the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. Let's find that here. So here's Pentecost and we count our way over here. So we know we are in green time right here. Well, it's good to be with you during this green time. And I thought you could help me tell a Bible story from the book of 2 Corinthians. I just need you to know 
one word and to say that word with a lot of enthusiasm and that word is generous all right let's try saying that together really loud generous, generous. great all right here we go we're gonna tell the story together while you are working on your faith speaking knowing things and loving why not work on this being generous it's a good test whether or not your love is real. You know how generous Jesus is to everyone. Jesus had such great power and still chose to be generous. Jesus gave it all up so that by choosing you over power, you too would choose generosity, generosity instead of power. So let's pay attention to those who have needs, people who need our time, our money, shelter, and food, basically our generosity. generosity. Wouldn't it be great if no one had too much and no one had too little? Wouldn't it be great if everyone just had what they needed, then we wouldn't have to be generous. generous. But until then, let's be as generous, generous as we can be, because we love Jesus. Amen. My sermon title for today is There's No Going Back. Over here at the Hooper household, we are busy planning my daughter's 12th birthday. Pre-COVID, it looked something like a bowling party with pizza and lots of friends. And we're still trying to figure out this year. I think, however, my daughter has already figured out that with coming of age also comes with more household chores. She started mowing the lawn this summer and started appreciating how every minute counts when the sun gets hotter and hotter as the morning becomes afternoon. She's already been doing her own laundry for several years, cleans the table every night, feeds the dog dinner, but she's also learned the joys of cleaning the bathroom this past year. As a parent, I am enjoying this handoff of responsibilities. But for me, it also comes with the knowledge my baby isn't a baby anymore. It's all good, and it's for her own good. Turns out that the age of 12 is when, in Orthodox Jewish tradition, a parent is no longer responsible for their child's actions. I wish, but it also comes with the recognition that the young person has new expectations as well as freedoms. You might say once you hit 12, there's no going back. 12 doesn't get lots of attention in Lutheran circles, so we might miss its significance today in the gospel story from Mark, when it's a 12-year-old girl that Jesus invites to rise from her sickbed and live, live to her fullest. As you might anticipate, the number 12 brings with it a sense of completeness. In a youth, 12 means leaving behind childish ways and taking responsibility for one's actions and agency in the world. The other daughter mentioned in today's good news is not 12 years old, but has been hemorrhaging blood for 12 complete years up until now, until touching Jesus' coat, and at this moment, there's no going back. Perhaps in the past you have heard a sermon about this woman and her crippling cultural taboos around impurity. And I apologize on behalf of every sermon or Bible study where you heard that, because 
This is not about purity and impurity and who touched who. According to Jewish New Testament scholar, yes, you heard that right, a Jewish PhD who studies the Christian New Testament, Dr. Levine says, there is no reason why the woman would not be in public and no reason why she should not seek Jesus' help. No crowd parts before her with the cry, get away, get away, hemorrhaging woman. No authorities restrict her to her house or require her to proclaim herself unclean, unclean, coming through. And finally, Jesus abrogates no laws concerning any crippling cultural taboos for there is no law forbidding the woman to touch him or him to touch her. And trust me, Jesus could have made a big stink about it if he had wanted to. Just to refresh your memory and mine, Jesus has just recently woken up from a nap on a boat to still a wild storm on the sea threatening his disciples' lives. He then went on to heal a man full of so many demons, folks compare his demons to the size of an army, calling him legion. Nevertheless, Jesus drives even a legion of demons into pigs who fall off a cliff, which is fine when it comes to Jewish law because pigs are forbidden and not even worth the food it takes to feed them. So, if Jesus had wanted to make a ruckus about the woman who touches him in a crowd, he could have certainly done something way more dramatic than call her daughter and tell her her faith has made her well so that she may go in peace. You see, there's no turning back for this daughter of Jesus. No doubt her peace will be both emotionally and physically real. Jesus had made it clear from the beginning of Mark that he was here to continue what John the Baptist has started before being arrested, to proclaim the good news that the time is fulfilled the kingdom of God is near, that we are at a turning point. Life will look and feel different from here. There's no turning back. Believe this good news. And she did. Will we? Will we? Perhaps not as dramatically as the daughters in today's text, but will we live like God's vision for the future is now? God's vision where love wins. God's vision where differences and diversity are celebrated. God's vision where there is peace. God's vision where grace outranks anything in its way. God's vision where instead of suffering, there is life and life in its fullest. God's vision where we are who we are called to be, all of us, not just some of us, cisgendered, white-collared, white folk, but all of us. This being Pride Month, I would be remiss not to bring up a part of today's good news that speaks to gender. So let's jump back into the middle of the story where there is a male Jesus and a bleeding woman. But let's get some help understanding the first century mindset beyond what we have been misinformed about in the past regarding purity laws. So I'd like to share the scholarship of Julie Morris to help us understand that in the first century, the body's vulnerability to disease was a gendered reality. Females were perceived as porous, lacking boundaries between the body and the exterior world, 
which left them susceptible to illness. The fact that women menstruated monthly demonstrated their inability to control their body or protect it from external forces. In short, a leaking body was a feminine body, an inferior body. In responding to the woman suffering from hemorrhages, Jesus blurs some notions of gender. The woman who approaches Jesus in the crowd has been bleeding for 12 years. So she fits squarely into the category of feminine. Not only is she bleeding, she is perpetually bleeding and has no control over it. Female bodies were already perceived as weaker and inferior, and this woman's leaking, porous body would be considered inferior even to other females. When she touches the fringe of Jesus's cloak, something unexpected happens. The power went out of him. The Greek could also be translated as the power leaked out of him. In other words, Jesus's body becomes leaky, porous, and permeable like that of a woman's. For Jesus's body to begin leaking when a leaky woman touches him is a feminizing act. Furthermore, it is a female who exerts power over a male body, extracting healing from him. And although it is easy for us to praise the woman for her bravery and miss the fact that after the healing, she is still terrified. She seems to know that she has transgressed gender boundaries and threatened the masculinity of Jesus's body. But Jesus does not chastise her or reproach her for stepping outside traditional gender roles. Quite the opposite. Not only does he tell her to go in peace, but he commands her to act, one that transgresses accepted gender roles, commands her act, commends it as an act of faith. Jesus's encounter with the bleeding woman re reveals a savior who is interested in keeping things in flux who is willing to be leaky and permeable and who holds the possibility of all sexes and genders within his own body. Needless to say, there is no going back. Jesus has chosen how to share God's vision. In fact, he heads to his hometown right after this and they reject him. Something is clearly different about him, her, they. What's different about us after we encounter God's healing? I experience God's healing as added responsibility and greater freedom. Perhaps that means I'm growing up. Whether we are 12 or something else, may today's good news sound like a birthday tune. Amen.
and now church together with the whole people of God and the entire communion of saints, let us join in confessing our faith, the faith into which we are baptized using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Church, separately in our homes and together in the Spirit, let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of hope, the ministry of your church extends across borders from nearby neighbors to far and distant countries. Accompany all those who labor eagerly in service of the gospel that through your good news all might experience transformation. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the land that provides our food. Guard all species of plants and animals from harsh changes in climate and empower us to protect all you have made. Righteous God, we pray for nations and their leaders. Give them a spirit of compassion and steer them toward a fair distribution of resources, that none among us would have too much or too little. God of healing, your touch has the power to make us whole. We pray for those suffering from physical or mental illness. Embrace those who are sick. Surround them with your unwavering presence. We pray for all those affected by this pandemic, the sick, the dying, the fearful, the unemployed, and the forgotten. We give thanks for the gift of science and the welcome hope of vaccines. We pray for all those who are working on our behalf. Comfort your world, O oh God. Especially today, we pray for those we now lift before you, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. We pray for this assembly and all those gathered together in worship. Revive our spirits, renew our relationships, and rekindle our faith that we might experience resurrection in this community. In the midst of anxiety, fear, grief, and pain, help us to be mindful of opportunities for rejoicing. We give you thanks for the many blessings you have given to us, including those we now lift before you, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. We give thanks for the faithful ancestors in every age whose lives have pointed us towards you. Envelop them in your love that we may be reunited with one another in the last days. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your abiding grace. Gather what has been sown among us. Make us to be what we have received from you, your body your very self, for the life of the world. Amen. And now together with the whole body of Christ and the entire communion of saints, we are bold to pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us to pray in the language most familiar to you or closest to your heart. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Church, as you share Christ's peace with one another, receive this benediction, the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. 
thanks be to God.